Have you ever had cause or opportunity to visit a third world slum? It's uh, quite an eye-opening experience and I always like the line from The Year of Living Dangerously when Billy Kwan says most of us become children again when we first enter the slums of Asia. It's uh, a revealing statement in that um, you're going into something, a completely different world, and it's a lot worse than anything you've ever seen before. And you do feel like a child in many ways. You feel very innocent, very sheltered, very protected among these people who see life in all its need and its want and its squalor. These people seem to know what life is. You've been living up there in the ivory tower all of your life. Now you're seeing reality. Well, I spend a great deal of my time uh, in Southeast Asia. In particular, I go to the Philippines and I often find myself um, face to face with the slums of Asia. The city of Manila, the northern, uh, not really a suburb, but the northern um, uh, district of um, Tondo is your stereotypical stinking, fetid Asian slum. It's not a very nice place at all. Um, if you want to pick up a child prostitute, you go up there. If you uh, want to pick up a prostitute in general, you go up there. The people that live there are living an extremely hard scrabble existence. That's where you'll see these big, gigantic heaps of garbage where people um, go there to scramble for existence, for sustenance. That's, um, I won't say it's as low as humanity can get, but it's getting there. Now, there's some other um, interesting bit that I picked up in a book a while ago. Uh, it's a Lonely Planet uh, travel guide for the Philippines. And um, I'll read you the quote that I found so revealing. In a global survey conducted in 2005, Filipinos came in among the world's happiest people, much to the Filipinos' delight, surprise, and bemusement. As Filipinos see it, they're no happier than anyone else on earth. In fact, generally speaking, Filipinos tend to take a rather unfavorable view of themselves, particularly in comparison with the wealth of Americans, the old culture of Europeans, the industry of the Chinese, and the discipline of the Japanese, and so forth. But one thing Filipinos have is a boundless sense of humor, and this extends to a rare ability to laugh at themselves. Perhaps it's a kind of defense mechanism, but even in the grim days under the Marcos dictatorship, they endlessly crack jokes about the police, the military, and anybody and anything connected with the despised regime. Marcos was the butt of countless jokes, as was his wife Imelda. We all know that we told jokes about her uh, even here in Canada. While laughing at their problems, Filipinos are, in effect, also poking fun at their own helplessness. Filipinos detest anything that acts as an obstacle to their fundamental love of life and freedom. Yet sometimes, when faced with difficulty, a Filipino's reaction is to laugh. To the casual observer, this may seem like an inexplicable bit of frivolity in the face of adversity, but there's more to it than meets the eye. To Filipinos, freedom is more important than material wealth, and if they laugh at something that curtails or threatens this priority, it's simply a way of coming to terms with the situation until they find a way to overcome it. Filipinos speak some 70 languages and dialects, yet in none of them are there words for depression, anxiety, anguish, or even boredom. This says a lot about the natural disposition of Filipinos. Unlike some other cultures, where suicide is seen as an honorable way out, the traditional Filipino way of thinking does not even consider it an option. No matter how big the problem is, or how profound the tragedy, to a Filipino, life goes on, and it must go on, and that's all there is to it. The average Filipino has very modest dreams, to have just enough to feed the family and be able to enjoy the simple pleasures of life. 
Filipinos may be poor in material things, but as long as there's love and laughter, they will, fly, they will find plenty to be happy about. Now, bear in mind that this is a uh, travel guide, and the um, people who write travel guides generally try to be positive about um, the, uh, the places that they're writing about. They want people to buy their books because they, you know, we can understand why they might want to sugarcoat these things. But my wife is a Filipino. <laughs> a Filipina. Um, I've showed her this passage before, and she says that, by and large, that's right. Don't take my word for it if you know any Filipinos yourself. Um, Cross-check this passage with uh, the said Filipino and see what they think of it. One could say that the Filipinos are almost irrationally optimistic. A lot of people have said that there's so much awfulness in this world that we have every reason and every right to be depressed about this world. Well, I'm af afraid that very few people whom I've spoken to who have said that have things as badly as most Filipinos have it. Their country is not a nice place to live in. But their attitude, their headspace, is a very nice place to occupy. I'll ask you this point blank. Are the Filipinos stupid? Obviously, I don't think so. Do you? Thank you.